Hello everyone, welcome back to the dork side. I'm the dork in the road and I'm gonna ride a KTM 500 EXC. The air filter might be a little clogged, off the water. we'll pull it out tonight and take a look at it. Alright, well, I'll just restart it if it dies. Well, we're off to an interesting start. Uh, doesn't want to run, but the air filter is real dusty out here, so... She may just be getting choked out, air filter full. I'm the dork in the road and I want to be your internet riding buddy, so please consider subscribing. We are here at the Turatech Rally 2022, about to go out with the KTM group, riding KTM 500 EXCF. This is, if I was going to upgrade from my DRZ, a bike that would be at the top of my list. Very light, easy to ride, tons of power, works on the highway, tons of aftermarket. So I've been really interested to ride one. Um, seat height was a concern for me, but I realized it's because I've been getting on with the kickstand down. If I put the kickstand up and then swing my leg over, it's not a problem. So uh, I am fully one flat foot on one side, or if I go side to side, I've got balls of both feet down. So. Um, and admittedly, it's not set up for my weight, so I probably get a little more sag than you normally would, but basically I was really worried about it and it, there's no need to be. So this is a 2022 500 EXCF, and we're gonna get out and do just a short, we're gonna be on the pavement just a little bit, and then right into the off-road, a good 20 minute gravel loop. So a great chance to get a sense for this bike and how it does uh, off the pavement, which is, you know, what I'm interested in. Uh, first impressions, the seat is awful, but you know, what do you expect? These, these bikes are not known for having fantastic seats at all um thought response is good it's very light feeling like seriously reminds me more of a mountain bike than any dual sport i've ridden which is a compliment if you ask me hopefully it'll idle it's having trouble idling but i think the dust the air filter is pretty dirty because we can get eaten a lot of dust out here yeah good throttle response but not crazy i worry sometimes i worry with these things that it's going to jump out from underneath me right like there's the whole it pulls your arms off argument with bikes like this with the more powerful 500s and stuff and uh it's pretty manageable i'm not doing a lot of clutch work so but you get good acceleration i can see why it's so easy to rip wheelies on this thing but uh it's not too bad it is vibrating as hell and i would wonder if it was the tires but they're tkc 80s and i've run them on my street bikes and they are not that bad so this bike is pure performance unrefined without creature comforts sorry we're gonna get some wind noise until we get off road yeah, it's nimble feeling, very nimble feeling, easily flickable. Like this is gonna be fun on the street and on the dirt, I think. That's the impression I get. So the bike is stiff, you know, it's not set up. This is their dirt bike. It's basically the 500, but with some, uh, with some street legal touches added. So it's got turn signals and, you know, brake lights and mirrors. But other than that, it's basically the same bike, which is what I'm after. I want a good trail bike that's lightweight, but I can ride into town if I want to. Yeah, that can also do the highway if I want to go moto camping on it. It is a different experience than the DRZ. It's got about the same horsepower, but weighs about 80 pounds less. 70 pounds less. It weighs about 70 pounds less. And you can feel it. All right, here we go. Now the fun part. All right, first gear. So basically on the street, its whole purpose is to get you places off-road. It's not that comfortable. The seat is awful. Uh, seat concepts would be the first mod, probably followed immediately by hand guards and a skin plate, but I do not want to go this slow, I'll tell you that much. Okay, it's very narrow between the legs, which, you know, again, I'm not used to, but so light and nimble feeling, but also really powerful. I think you got to get way out over the front because the power is definitely going to throw you back if you're not careful. I'm just in first right now. There's second. We'll cruise in second. Uh, but I like the bars. The stock bar height is good. Uh, the stock mirrors are weird and square. So double takes, but they work at least. I can see behind me. Again, it's just, they throw these things on because they have to to be street legal, not because they're trying to make the best ones ever. You know, at least the street legal stuff. I would like to get farther back and get a real test here. Uh, but again, it's the, the overwhelming impression of this bike is it is super light. It's very light. Uh, the weight, you know, Everide himself just did a big extended test ride on a 500, uh, a 500 EXCF six days. And he spent 10 minutes of that video raving about the weight and I feel it already. It just, it feels like a bicycle. Like, no kidding. I don't, it's just, let's flick it around. Let's do whatever we want. You can put it wherever you want it. And that is something. Easy enough to shift and ride. It rides smooth. Again, lots of vibration. If you're looking for comfort, you're not looking for a KTM, right? This is ultimate performance. You know, lightest, fastest, 
you know, most capable bike there is. And that, everything else is a secondary concern. Uh, I think comfort is a tertiary or a quaternary. What's fourth? I don't even know, but it's lower than that. Real snappy throttle, real good snappy throttle. It's fun. I feel like getting the front end up is gonna be easy. Uh, you can do it definitely spin the rear tire uh, with ease, especially with these TKC 80 50 50 tires on it. Okay, it feels like riding a, a wild horse, right? It's controlled, it's, but it's got a little bit of spunk to it, but, uh, but it keeps going where you want it to go. It's not unrefined, it is uh, untamed, you could say. It's definitely potential here for mistakes uh, to be catastrophic, so just because the throttle is so snappy and there's a lot of power. So uh, just keep that in mind. If, uh, if you're a newer rider, it's just not a good, I don't think it's a good bike for newer riders. Really tall, really powerful, easy to, to wheelie or loop out. There we go. Oh man, you don't even notice. That was a big pothole, I know, because I hit it three times earlier. It's my fourth test ride today. Uh, so if you get a chance, check out my, uh, I test ride of the Tiger 1200, of the Ducati Voltistrada V4, the Ducati Scrambler, all good. Yeah, I like this bike a lot. I don't like the speed at which we are going. Let's see what are the bumps like when you're sitting down. Oh yeah, it does great. It does great. Very minimal instrumentation. It's not a secret. Um, I think the elephant in the room is probably one. Dork, haven't you talked extensive shit about KTMs? Yep, I definitely have. Um, and, and I think my opinion is changing for two reasons. One, I had a bunch of preconceived notions. I just had a lot of misconceptions, I think, um, about the, the true ownership experience. Uh, and, and you know, it's true the maintenance is more frequent and you know, maybe they have quality control issues, I don't know. But from what I hear from the people who actually own them, the dirt bikes, like the 500 here and the 350, are pretty reliable as long as you keep up on the maintenance. And you know, that's what you're signing up for when you buy a KTM. If you don't know that, don't get one. But even the 30, 30 hour oil changes, you know, that's 600 to 900 miles, depending on how fast you're riding. That's pretty good, you know, and I, I only want the bike like this for trail riding and for connecting trails and for occasionally, you know, running into town while I'm out camping and trail riding. So uh, for that, there's nothing wrong with it. There's nothing wrong with it. I'm not gonna put a lot of miles on it. Uh, and the other thing that's changed is, uh, you know, and this, take it for what you will, but I'm just being honest, is because motorcycle videos are now my job, right? So I have a little bit more money to spend on motorcycles and motorcycle related things uh, because it's all business expenses now. And so um, I care less that I have to do maintenance more often. The idea that it might break down and need to be fixed doesn't scare me as much as it used to. So back in the day when I was a much less competent rider, right, with, with no money really for the hobby other than buying bikes and what I could scrounge together, uh, you know, not having to maintain bikes was a big deal to me because I couldn't afford it. And now I can. So it's just like when you buy a nice moto camping tent that's a little bit smaller, but costs a lot more, right? If you want to get more performance, if you want to get higher quality, then uh, you have to spend more money and you get diminishing returns. And so just because I now have more financial freedom to do something like that, it makes a bike like this far more appealing to me. So there's that. I can, I, I can afford to do oil changes more than once a year now. And before I really didn't want to or couldn't afford to. So yeah, it is a strong contender for me because there is no other bike that does what I want like this one does. I want a bike that I can take on trails, little OHV trails, single track trails, but it's still street legal and can still uh, like connect trails, run into town. It'd be nice to be camping and not have to break camp, have a street legal bike to do that on. Uh, I want a bike that I can take, I can load up with camping gear and take on the highway occasionally like I can with my DRZ. Basically, I want a bike that does everything my DRZ does just faster. And uh, that's this bike, that's this bike. There aren't many other bikes that do it. Husky 501, uh, some would argue the KTM 350, but I just, that highway thing makes me want the 500. Uh, there's the Beta 390, 430, 500, all of those bikes, but there's no Japanese bike. And before you say 450L, 450L is 289 pounds wet. This is 250. And that is a significant difference. The suspension, I like the 450L, I did a test ride. I enjoyed it. You can check out that video, but it is significantly better. It just, it just is like performance wise. And I'm, I'm starting to care less about reliability and easy maintenance and more about performance. And in that sense, there is no bike better suited for that than this or the, or the betas, right? And like I said, I have a lot of friends that have them and they haven't had a ton of issues. So say what you will about KTM reliability. Say what you will about me drinking the orange Kool-Aid, because maybe I am, maybe I am. That Norton is changing my mind. I'll be honest with you. 
it's really opened my eyes. I kind of bought it because I couldn't get a hold of anything else that I wanted. But once I started writing it, I was like, damn, this thing is awesome. And uh, what else have I missed because I, I have such a narrow mind about certain things? So yeah, I still don't think KTMs are the most reliable or easy to maintain bikes on earth, but holy shit, are they fun. I understand why people are willing to spend the extra money on them because you get a level of sort of performance and just fun that you can't get from anything else. You just can't do it, dude. You just can't. And this bike, it's easy to ride. You just flick it around. It's so light. I'm just throwing the ass end around. So it's easy to screw up and make a big mistake. Oh, Jesus. I just got the front end off the ground right there. I wasn't even trying. This bike is easy to ride. It's easy to ride because it's light and powerful. It's not easy to ride if you're not good at controlling the throttle. Uh, it can't get away from you, so you got to be careful. But. Oh, but it'll wear you out. This thing is vibrating me like crazy. It is not comfortable. Again, you don't, you don't ride these for comfort. They're not for comfort. It's just not what they're for. If you want comfort, get a DRZ. Get that 450L. It's more comfortable. Oh, right over the top. Yeah, that was way too easy. That was way too easy. That was awesome. I didn't even mean to get the front end up that far. It was just like, what do you want? You got it. And I just jumped it. It's so nimble. It's just light and flickable. It'll beat you up though. I wouldn't want to ride this all day. It'll get you there on the highway, but I don't know if you want it to. Oh, you can shift it with one finger. That's fun. Look at these bumps. It just eats them. It just eats them. I'm hitting them on purpose, dude. I don't like that it's dying constantly. Yeah. Oh, she gets it. She gets it. Dude, it's so fun. It's very planted. Like the suspension just keeps your tires on the ground. Overall, this bike is very impressive and fun, but it's not comfortable. You know what I mean? It's a rocket ship. It's, a, it's an indie car. It's a sport bike that you ride off road, you know? It's not for comfort or touring. It's for one purpose, and it's to go fast off-road and be fun. And it does that exceptionally well. And it is, once you get to a certain level, if the throttle response doesn't scare you, it is confidence-inspiring. It just is. Yeah, it keeps dying. Nothing's running okay now? No. No, it's dying on me. All right, back on the street, where it is fun, but uh, I wouldn't call it comfortable. But that's the theme, right? This thing is all function. It's no form. Like, it's as comfortable as it needs to be for human beings to ride it, uh, but no more. No more comfortable than that. So that doesn't appeal to you. The, me of two years ago, that didn't appeal to me. Me of a year ago, it didn't appeal to me. It seemed like too much of a trade-off. Right, but now I want to go faster and ride harder and have a way more trails capable bike that's easier to pick up when I drop it because I drop it all the time. And so I'm now willing to make that trade off. I'm now willing to think about sacrificing comfort and reliability and ease of maintenance and spending a little bit more money to get a bike to get that's more capable because it's the only way to get more capable is to throw more money at it. They're just, I could do a lot to the DRZ, but it's always going to be a DRZ and it's, it's a great all around bike. It's a great 50 50 bike. It's a great beginner bike. It's a great bike to ride off road when you're learning, uh, but it's not as fun as this. And that's something, you know. So we are doing 60. It'll do 60 easy. It's even fun on the road as long as you're okay with uh, your testicles being vibrated completely off. It's fun to ride. Uh, I could see why they make these into supermotos because I bet it's a blast. But it's got lots of fun usable power. Like a, like a good dual sport should. Yeah, it's fun. Torquey as hell. Easy to get the front wheel up whether you mean to or not. I definitely jumped that puddle back there, which is, you know, I'm not 100% sure that's what I was trying to do, but... It happened, you know, uh, my friend Tim said, these bikes are so easy to ride because they do so much for you. And I didn't believe him because I've always been intimidated by the power. I see it today. I see it now. I see it. And uh, back across the awesome motorcycle only bridge. Beautiful, right? This is a great end. Every test ride I've been on today, we come across this and it's been awesome. 
been awesome. Well, this is a fun bike, but it isn't for the faint of heart or those who don't have a lot of money to spend or those who are maintenance averse. But if you want the most pure, undistilled capability and fun factor in a bike that is both street legal and incredibly off-road capable, it is difficult at this point in time to beat the KTM 500 EXCF. Uh, the 350 or is also a contender. Uh, the Husky 501 is the same bike with a few small changes. And of course, I would throw the Beta 390, 430, 500 into the same category. But, but are there other bikes in that category that do all the things I just described as well? Let me know in the comments. Uh, I know some of you are probably upset to hear me saying that maybe the DRZ is not my forever trail bike, but I also know there's some of you that understand. So I hope you'll have an open mind. And uh, I love my DRZ. It's still one of my favorite bikes of all time. We'll see what happens. But anyway, we're back here at the rally. So I just want to say thanks for watching. I appreciate you. If you own a KTM 500 EXCF, I would love to hear your experience with the reliability and the maintenance and how hard all that is. And if you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments. But for now, and as always, I just want to say thank you very much for watching. And please do not forget to be excellent to each other. Oh, uh, thank you. Also, you know, it is a concern that I couldn't keep this thing running on the ride, but I have enough friends with these that, that don't have that problem that I'm, I'm not unconvinced that it's that, uh, that it's the air filter that he mentioned. So I'm willing to give him the benefit of the doubt for that. You may not be, because it's sure, you're sure like, oh, KTMs are unreliable. See, your the demo bike wouldn't even run. And you know, you're not wrong. It didn't run well.